let's talk about how an ion chamber works. This diagram shows a cross section of an ion chamber. The collecting volume is the air cavity inside. There are two electrodes inside it, one in the center and the other one in the inner surface of the chamber wall. With the radiation beam comes in, it liberates the electrons inside the chamber wall, as shown here, the blue dots. And these secondary electrons move freely across the air cavity. At this point, if you apply a voltage difference between the two electrodes, for example, a positive voltage to the central electrode and a negative voltage to the wall electrode, then these secondary electrons will move in a certain direction. This gives a current, which can be measured by the attached electrometer. This is how an ion chamber measures charge or current. Notably, there are two unique features about the chamber wall. First, it is air equivalent. This means the effective atomic number of the chamber wall is the same as the effective atomic number of the air. This is because in order to properly measure charge, charge particle equilibrium, or CPE, has to maintain inside the air cavity. And this condition will be met easily if the chamber wall is nothing but essentially equivalent to the air. For the same reason to maintain CPE inside the cavity, the chamber wall needs to have an appropriate thickness, so the secondary electrons won't be too many or too few for CPE happening. In addition, the dimension and materials of the central electrode also needs to apply with the CPE condition. That's why, preferably, it is made of low atomic number material, such as graphite or aluminum, which is closer to air than other conductors made of metal. All of this is to ensure the air cavity gets as less perturbations as possible. Now we understand how an ion chamber works. The next question is how much voltage should be applied to the electrodes to measure the charge properly? To answer that question, we will need to understand an important concept gas amplification curve, which will be discussed in the next video tutorial.